lines of credit have been many times cut in half to where they don't have the lines of credit. And I'm hearing from some of our business owners that when they do want to take equity out of their businesses, they can't even take the equity out of their businesses to expand their products. And so I guess my question would be, what has changed over the last two to three years that has caused this market to tighten up? And what are the problems associated that's caused those things? And in this new Consumer Protection Financial Act, do you think that will help the situation where more money will be available and the, and the credit will start flowing? Or are we reaching too far and it's going to cause the market to contract? Any of you? I will say that, in fact, it's very hard for, when I refer to some of the smaller businesses, and some of these are public institutions like hospitals, private schools, who are suffering because they can't get their loans. The problem is the community banks are wonderful, and they serve a tremendous need for, small, for the smaller clients, and they have come through for, for the clients in the small businesses. And the community banks have been very good. The problem we see in that area, though, is when it gets to 2 and 3 and 4 or 15 and $18 million, which are still small entities in small towns, who have these kinds of lines of credit, which or letters of credit, to secure bonds, public bonds that have been issued. The big banks are the ones that no longer can make those loans. And as a result, and we're seeing this in a number of private institutions, uh, they're having to try to figure out a way to pay off these bonds with far more expensive capital. And it's not, it's not a positive thing. It's not good for them. And that's, what you're hearing at your home is the same as I'm hearing all across the country. Uh, so I was actually just in Oklahoma last week for three days looking at seed stage startups to invest in, coming out of your research universities. Some really exciting things, particularly in the energy arena. I hope you put your money there. Uh, we're, we're looking. You know, we, we want to. Um, but precisely that reason, you know, we don't provide credit. We, we provide investment equity capital. But because these startups can't get you know, even a home equity loan to finance their startup, they're really needing that first $500,000 $500, from us and it's getting harder and harder for us to provide that for the reasons I just said in my prior answer. And as well, the potential for this regulation uh, will be disproportionately felt on the smallest firms that provide that earliest stage of capital. And so there's a good chance that that entire swath of 500000 to a million dollars of seed stage capital, uh, you know, if we're forced to follow hedge fund regulations, the cost of that will drive the firms who do that out of business. Can I ask also another question, uh, Madam Chairman? The other thing I'm hearing from our local bankers is that the, the fee increases uh, to recapitalize FDIC is, is causing them not to have as much capital to, and loans to put out into the marketplace. And they have told me, like in my state, that $37 million has gone out in, in fee increases, which they could be lending out to our small businesses and even to those who are wanting to have mortgages. And they're very concerned about another fee increase on those small bankers that it will once again dry up capital and take it out of the marketplace. Are you seeing that back in your individual organizations and states that it's really uh, taking capital out of the marketplace, lending ability? It's certainly something we hear from our small bank members. If you go to any local chamber uh, across the country, you'll find a, a small banker on the board. Uh, and it's particularly one of the, you know, so whether those fees are necessary, clearly you have to keep FDIC moving. We're going through a very exigent period here. Uh, the real question then is do you want to add fees on top of that even further uh, through the Consumer Financial Protection Agency? It's clearly the wrong time to add unnecessary fees, particularly when they won't produce the intended result. Yes, sir. Congresswoman, uh, perhaps there's a parallel in the financial services, non-insurance financial service area that you might consider that I mentioned earlier about underwriting or identifying a risk, underwriting and pricing it properly. And you do the best job you can, whether it be a, a house on a beach or a subprime mortgage or whatever. And then when the hurricane comes or the collapse happens, uh, management meetings happen that say, we're not going to do that again. And then we have to recast all our expectations, and all of a sudden, that usually results in, in underwriting, whether it be whatever you're underwriting, tightening up, which could mean changing credit score or unwillingness to put out lines of credit. Also, the bad result could result in uh, an organization being over leveraged. So, so we have too much out there, so we've got to pull back. All right. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <laughs> Do 
to thank all of you for participating. It has been a very insightful information, and uh, the members of the panels are excused. And I will ask the members of the second panel to please come forward and take your seat. Thanks. <laughs>